Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Blastcast. Of course, I am Jars. With me, as always, is my discount 12-pack from Costco co-host, Lightning Dragon. What, I'm beer now? <laughs> well, no, I got you the 12-pack. I guess I, I guess maybe you are beer. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe maybe a 6-pack is beer and a 12-pack is soda. Am I getting them confused? I don't drink a lot I think, of beer. I think they sell beer in 12 as well, so you're good. You're good. Well, there we go. Always I'm, buy in bulk. I'm a, it's I'm cheaper. A, I'm a double, double edition of beer, I guess. There you go. All right, guys. Let's go ahead and get to the first piece of news here. We have, uh, of course, the there are 23 blockers remaining until they ship Evocati into the PTU status. And uh, so, so yeah. then everybody can enjoy the bugs. <laughs> well, I mean, by then, I imagine it'd be different bugs. But yeah, we're getting closer. I, I think they're really trying to push this to be out by CitizenCon. That's kind of the... I would imagine what they're striving to do. And they've got basically at this point in time, 10 days to do it. Oh, yeah, 10 days to do it. So I can imagine this could be quite a quite a lot of work. All Maybe. hands on deck. Oh, big time, big time. This week's Around the Verse was about cockpits damage and, and basically a way for your character to respond to when the ship is hit from different angles, responding to G-forces, etc. And this is something that I felt that the game has needed for a long, long time. Because any of you who've been out there know that when you get hit or you just you don't know. A lot of times you're being hit and you have no feedback. And this kind of feedback, I think, is going to really help. Especially uh, the shaking of your, of your head camera or whatnot. And of course, that might make some people sick. So we'll have to see how that goes. Maybe they'll add a slider that you can adjust that a bit. Because I know that some people are really sensitive to those kind of things. But overall, just the fact that they're finally approaching this, I'm very happy with that because there's been many times I've been out there in the Persistent Universe or playing Arena Commander, and I had no idea that my ship was being shot to pieces. Uh, and sometimes it's, it's just too hard to look down uh, and see the status, you know, uh, when, you're, when you're focused. It's not something you consciously do, and you lose track. So, yeah, really good stuff, and I really like seeing the damage effects in there. I like seeing the, the smoke and the fire. I hope there is enough stages on this because a lot of times as, as i said the combat's pretty fast paced you can go from fully okay to fully not okay pretty quickly it starts <laughs> yeah to... hopefully that gets fixed eventually that's a pacing issue that's back to the core of it again you know that like when you play a lot of world war ii games you know you, you'll get hit and you know maybe you'll start seeing smoke or maybe you'll get like an oil splatter on your uh on your cockpit windshield or something like that there's all these different uh things that start to happen it, of course you do you, you have instant kills too in a world war ii kind of game but uh, 20 millimeter cannons they rip apart airplanes yeah pretty much pretty much i used to use the uh my favorite plane was the yak 9k uh and basically that one's Is that uh, the 37 millimeter cannon in the nose or with with the high explosive rounds yeah so <laughs> so, so so basically it would just um blow up uh, the plane to pieces yeah uh, yeah especially if you pilot you know pilot killed someone with that there was really pilot overkill it, it was pilot splatting oh yeah but well, good times now if i remember correctly though the the cockpits thing it's been on the forums as well right yeah there's been a pretty heated debate about it and it has a lot to do with uh, visibility see a lot of people are kind of upset that right now on a lot of ships half the screen is basically MFDs and, and bars and other parts of, of the of the view itself. And I you can know what? Hmm. We have the perfect picture for this. MFDs and, and everywhere. How about uh, one of these space shuttles? You know, maybe a bit old technology now, but uh, we have lovely screenshots to show you about different, oh, yeah. uh, different well, those, cockpits. I'm going to cycle them through all these things. Here. Even, even, the, even the, the original Wing Commander. In fact, the original Wing Commander had uh, screens that were, uh, well, even, even, your view area was even smaller than what we have now in a lot of our ships. So, and of course, back then you didn't even have a, a wide screen, a wide display or anything like that. Everything was just kind of standard TV format. And so it's not uncommon to see this kind of thing. Now, where people get kind of upset is because I think, you know, both sides have merit to what they're saying. Some people want to see uh, less MFD. Some people want to see, are happy with the way it is. And I can understand both sides of the argument. Because having sat behind the yoke of an airplane myself in real life, I can tell you that even though you have a, a really fairly large dash, 
with a lot of instruments on it your your focus is through that window no matter how big that window is and you don't really get i guess it comes down to perception like you're focused out like when you're driving right you don't notice all the time your speedometer and stuff like that you're that's not your focus so when but when you're playing a video game they've got to keep that relevant information on screen at all times now for me i i think a fair compromise would be to uh minimize the standard mfds that show up so for example uh on the left for example say they may show your ship status the middle's the radar and the right is your target and if you don't have a target some other relative information but when you press whatever key it is to interact your whole view angle shifts down say like 30 degrees and now you're looking at all your mfds you quickly interact with them, release the button, and you're right back up to normal view again, only looking at your three primary displays. And obviously you could have a toggle variant or a hold variant, kind of like a like a crouch. Yeah, exactly. So it's one of those things that I think if they did it this way, they could get some real estate back. And when you're flying around normally, you really you just don't need to see exactly at all times uh, what, what your heat of your weapons are or how many missiles you're carrying or you know how much cargo you're carrying that should be stuff that you know you, you you do you look up because you have the time to but when it comes to uh, having visibility related to combat you want to just have the bare bones basic until you need something more and i feel if they did it that way that would free up maybe i don't know they're 20 percent of the real estate on there, or if they don't want to free up that much real estate, they can make those primary MFDs bigger and more visible, easier to see. Um, however, they want to approach that, but basically, I feel that that would free up. Uh, it would be very similar to like when I, when I was flying a plane. You know, you're looking to the cockpit, and you need to see your altimeter, right? You just glance down, you look at your altimeter, and you look back up. Something like this would be very similar. You press the button, your character looks down at all the all the other instruments. You know, you press the button again or let go if it's a toggle or whatever, and your eyes snap back up. It, it, it could be just as quick or almost as quick as an eye glance down at an instrument as well. So that's something that I think that maybe they, sh they need to start looking at as a possibility. Uh, I think that might make both sides a little bit happier. This is one of those things where, you know, they'll have to iterate on development and make changes as the game moves across. But if they don't, um, if they fill up the screens with, with too much stuff, it almost feels like that um, eye tracking, or an eye tracking, but head tracking, is going to become a requirement. Now, I know that people said in the last video that, you know, they're going to have uh, the face over IP and all that, but some people don't have web cameras. I don't have a web camera. I have track IR, you know, that's where I get around that problem. But, but if I didn't have track IR, I also don't have a web camera. And some people don't have web cameras, so they're, that's not a solution for them is making them go out and buy some additional peripheral. So a hotkey that makes you focus on all the panels, just look down, I feel that'd be a really good solution. And another thing also, a little bit different than cockpits here, would be not really turret related but just visual thing related um we got into a discussion we were talking about the star fair and just how much dash is there and you joke you could set up an apartment up in there um and you were saying you could like i don't remember exactly what you were talking about but you could like pull the view in a bit and kind of have more displays and stuff it's it's what started our, our big debate on cockpits. yeah well the dash is so huge and i thought why don't they just make those seats push them in like i said you have that you have that you could practically put up make a, a bedroom out of that dashboard <laughs> and i thought why don't you just move the seats in like create grooves right and you have your primary information in front of you and onto your left and to your right once again using the, the the functionality of you know when you're gonna start looking at screens you say have your left at certain systems on your right maybe be refueling like you'll, you'll you'll have enough space that you can pivot your chair and like Okay, now I'm looking at the you know the refueling part or whatnot. So you're you're thinking where the the chair actually would like slide into where the dash is, and mm -hmm. you have information yeah, in front of you, left and right of you. Yeah, we um, got we got the sliding chair tech already from the Vanguard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that that actually probably be a good idea. You might be able to push the chairs in a little bit so mm -hmm. they're not as close to the windows, and that would also free up some of the dash space. Um, but it also um, brought up the fact that cameras because we were talking about turrets kind of in the same uh question or comment discussion there we go that's the right word um 
But with all these extra MFDs and possibly different camera angles and stuff, something like the, the Starfarer especially, um, as external cameras, like if you're going to do, you know, quote-unquote mid-air refueling, right? I mean, sure, yeah. technically you can just park in space because it's space. You don't have to fly, which makes it, you know, a lot easier. But how the hell are you going to hook up to someone? Is it just going to be like the, the, the person pushes a button and they just automatically, you know, dock with you and get refuel? Well, or, or it's, you... the, it's, that, it's that catwalk that goes out in the space in the back where you have some yeah. guys standing. I thought we thought that was kind of a weird way to do it. Like, okay, get your EVA suit on so we can fill this guy up with fuel. Like, wouldn't you just... why, would you, why would you do that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could see having the catwalk and check the status of the tanks for damage or do a work on them or whatnot. It, it definitely would serve a purpose, but it's not like... Like, for example, imagine this is in atmosphere, right? You're going to send someone <laughs> out on the, you know, maybe you're doing like Mach 1 or, or something. Oh, I pay good why money to see that. Why don't you go onto the catwalk <laughs> there? Because we got someone who needs a refueling, you know, as you're, as you're, you know, flying at, you know, hundreds of meters per second through the atmosphere. That's not a very smart place for a person to be, no matter how much safety equipment he has on there, okay? It's like the so, criminal saying you're fired. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Almost, you know. Uh, true live style, I believe. But, um, like, why why couldn't you have, like, an external camera or, in the case of, you know, yeah, modern I mean, we've, we've got the tech here, now. With, we've got with the render to texture. There's no reason we couldn't have, like, you know, the boom arm camera, so to speak. Uh, you're going to look, you, you know, you swivel, you're flying straight and level, and basically you just swivel off to the right or whatever. Or the, or the guy in the passenger side, right? Because you got the, the pilot and you got the co pilot seat over the right. He runs the uh, the fuel boom, so he goes ahead uh, and and looks down at his MFDs, and he starts manually controlling the same way that we have. Like you can run the turret, and the Super Hornet. Uh, he goes ahead and runs that boom arm and connects it to wherever it's supposed to go, and there you have and it. And then You're... both ships explode because physics grids. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Except one of them is going to have a lot more fuel when it explodes. It'd be a lot prettier. <laughs> Oh my gosh, yeah, right. Every time they talk about ships coupling together, whether, whether it's a P-52 Merlin or especially a fuel tanker tank hooking up to a fighter, you're right. Every time I think of that, it's just physics grids, man. I just, I just see disaster. <laughs> you know, at that point in you time... You know it's going to happen, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I, I, I tell you what, my star fare is not being used to go and, like, fuel up some fighter in middle space. I'm like, I'm landing, <laughs> I'm landing it at my base, and I'm emptying the cargo there, and I'm fuel filling up my ships at my, at my hangar. <laughs> it is not. I am not doing mid space refueling it like like for the first several months until the all the people keep complaining about their star fares exploding because that's absolutely what's going to happen. I get. I can about guarantee you that's going to be just. Oh. Well, we'll have to try once or twice just so we can get footage of them exploding. We'll, we'll call it mid air explosion instead of mid air refueling. Oh yeah, yeah. So of course you know, I play. Uh, play and have played a lot of World War II games and when I look at the cockpits we have in our ships I really don't see them as being much more obtrusive than any of these World War II style aircraft I mean looking at some of these pictures I have up here you can see how, how, how some of the some of the, the cockpits on these are just you know amazingly hard to see through and especially on the bombers that it could be people can play about the uh, complain about the Connie but on some of these, the Connie is supremely the king of visibility compared to <laughs> some of these other ones. So, you know, let us know what you think down below about cockpit visibility, about how you feel the cockpits are set up now, what you saw in Around the Verse. If you like the idea of having like half of them down below or whatnot, and then you could press... Uh, a toggle of some kind and your whole view shifts down just to look at your MFDs and then, you know, toggle it back or whatever to just go back to normal view. Uh, if you have your own solution about this kind of thing, just any thoughts in general about the cockpits of the ships? Because this is really kind of a hot button topic and one way or another, CIG is kind of stuck to a degree because they do have to get that important information on the screen for you. It's just something they're going to have to do unless they want to force you to buy certain peripherals. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, guys. Oh, yeah. One last thing. Uh, Retaliator. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, I figured there was a picture of a Retaliator you were showing off. No, I don't, I don't know. I, I I downloaded, like, so many cockpits for this, so I don't... It's probably... I, well, I don't hang know. on. Do you have a B-17 and a B-29 cockpit in there? I have HE-111. I have tons of stuff. I I probably do. I, I yeah, make, make sure you have those two. 
and then right. throw a retaliator between them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we'll go ahead. I know it's not a very long episode, but uh, we will go ahead and catch you next time on the Blast Cats. It's kind of a drought, but we're getting closer to CitizenCon, and maybe there'll be something amazing then. In the meantime, have yourself a great week. I do have some fun stuff coming up, and uh, maybe Lightning does too. That one, yeah. though, I can't guarantee. <laughs> well, I mean, like, it depends on, like, recording stuff, I guess. That's true. All right, guys. <laughs> Catch you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>